Right. It's time to continue on with the testicle driver circuits. Now, in the previous video, you may remember that I installed the interrupter. Well, apparently, there is a mistake in the schematic that I didn't realize because I'm not an expert with the 555 timer chip. And Tester 2 Destruction has mentioned that, and also mentioned that the, the, the corrected schematic on Discord, which I cannot seem to figure out how to access. I mean, I've just got no idea how to use these social media things, they're just not my thing. Anyway, in today's video, I'm going to be putting the high frequency stuff in, and then maybe even running a little test. So, first thing I'm going to be doing is installing the CD4046 chip, then I shall be putting in the gate driver chips, and obviously the other voltage regulator that's going to power it. First things first though, the 4046. Alright, so I think that's going to be a good place for the CD4046 chip. So, over to this contraption here, what's this all about? Well, this is going to be for the frequency adjustment. So this one is the fine, I mean, the coarse adjustment. This one is the fine adjustment, and this one here is going to limit the low frequency. I want to limit it to about 100 kilohertz, and go up to about 1 megahertz. So what we got here, we've got a positive rail going into the 1K potentiometer, being used as a variable resistor. Then that goes into this end of the 22K potentiometer. The other end of the 22K potentiometer is connected to the ground rail through this 5K variable resistor, potentiometer, whatever you want to call it. With this, I can limit how low the frequency will go, because if, without this, if I was to turn this all the way down, the chip will just completely stop oscillating. It'll go, it'll go down to some really low frequency, like what, maybe 10 hertz or something, and yeah, I want to limit that to about 100 kilohertz. I mean, I will eventually replace this one with a fixed resistor, but for now I'm going to use a potentiometer so I can actually find out what that resistance needs to be. Well, it's looking a bit more populated now. So this is the socket that the 4046 is going to go in. It's already wired up to the power rails with a very few extra components that it needs in order to work. Well, let's power it up and see if we get a waveform. Okay, about to test it now. Hope I haven't fried this chip, because right now it is grounded through the scope. This whole circuit's grounded through the scope. And I just so happened to touch pin 4, which is the output, while I was also touching this, and I got a huge shock. Such a shock it made me fart. I measured the voltage, and we get like 210 volts there, so... Now how we're getting 210 volts between two grounds. I just hope that wasn't enough current to fry this thing. That's the trouble with these little wall watt supplies. You may get the voltage you want between the two output wires. You also get a high voltage floating on those two wires too. Whoa, would you look at that? Man, that green LED is bright, but... Would you look at that? Took a licking, and it keeps on ticking. There is one little mystery though. <coughs> Excuse me. The waveform's negative. Instead of being up here, it's down there. Well, at this point, I might as well change my name to Freddy Fudge Up, because I've connected the scope's ground to the circuit's positive rail instead of the negative rail. Okay, so trying again with the alligator clips in the right place, and something over that green LED because it's just so freaking bright. We now have the waveform on the positive half, where it's supposed to be. Right now we're operating at about 1.03 megahertz. That's with all these potentiometers in their middle position, so I'm not sure what kind of frequency range we're going to get. I'm going to have to put the camera down while I do this, so, uh... Maybe I could just do this one. Okay, I'm just think of course adjustment, just to see how far we can go up. Okay, that's about 1.5 megahertz. Let's see how far we can go down. 161 kilohertz. I don't know, I'm getting shocks of stuff. This is connected to my scope's ground. Just to touch that to my homemade tape recorder. Just what the hell? Shouldn't be doing that. I'll deal with it.
There you go. There's some sparks for you. Well, another day, another failure. So I built this little circuit to adjust the frequency with high frequency and low frequency limits. It does its job, but it's not stable. So this is the circuit that I came up with. I put this transistor in just so that the high frequency and the low frequency limits don't interfere with each other too much. And while it does work, it's not stable. Because the one thing I forgot is that transistors are sensitive to temperature and their game will change if they get hot or cold under, well... At the moment, this is oscillating at about 172 kilohertz. Alright, it's so not going to touch any of the potential. So I'm just going to breathe on the transistor. <sighs> you see the frequency is now going up. In a few seconds, as the transistor cools, it should start going down again. There it goes. So, yeah. I'm just going to take the transistor out and hope this circuit works. So this is the new circuit that I've come up with. It's basically just a resistor ladder, but it should work. So here's how we're going to adjust it. So right now, everything is at its midpoint. And first thing to do is adjust the high frequency limit. So I'm going to turn the coarse tuning all the way up. So we're now at... 933 kilohertz. We need to go a little bit higher than that, so now adjust the high frequency limit. Get that to about a megahertz. Okay. That's what I want my high frequency limit to be. I want that to be one megahertz. And I want my low frequency limit to be about 100 kilohertz, so now I'm going to turn the course adjustment all the way down. And we're almost there, we're at 83 kilohertz, so this is my low adjustment. I'm just going to adjust that. Try to get the frequency back around about 100 kilohertz. Doesn't need to be spot on. Just close enough. Okay, yep, I think I'll keep it at that. So, we're at about 100 kilohertz, well, 102 kilohertz. Now I'm going to turn the course tuning all the way up. And we should be at around a megahertz. And, yes, indeed we are. And, of course, the course and fine-tuning potentiometers are doing their thing. If I adjust the course one, we get a very big change in frequency. And if I adjust the fine one, we only get a small change in frequency. Just as I planned. Okay, so that works. Now I just gotta put in the uh, bleh, gate driver chips, um, gate drive transformer, and of course the voltage regulator to power it all. And I better get on with that now. I'm going to have to put the transformer on a separate board because there's just no space there. For when I put the capacitors and the resistors in, there's just going to be no bleh, no space for the transformer. So yeah, that's going to have to go onto a separate board. Also, I made one little cock up, which is this capacitor here, which I put in the wrong way around. And I'm surprised that hasn't blown up by now because they usually do. That's been in there the wrong way around all this time and I didn't even know about it until I just went over it just now. So yeah, when I put, um, I'm going to turn that round and I'm going to put the two chips in, put the resistor and the capacitor in to control the you know, gate drive transformer. And we'll see if this thing works. Well, the workbench is in a state at the moment, but I am working on the gate drive transformer board. So, we've got... <clears throat> The transformer itself, two resistors, I haven't put the diodes in yet, I've put the Zener diodes in but I haven't put the diodes that go across the resistors in yet. As you can see this is taking shape, I've just got to solder this all in and stuff. Well after much digging around looking for the camera because it was buried under all this stuff on the bench, I've only got to clear this up, I have tagged on the little daughter board. 
with the gate driver transformer and the capacitor. I did find one rheostat in my stash and I tried to modify it. This is 130 ohms. Well, it's not 130 ohms anymore. Been trying to modify it. I've killed it. It's a memory. I've killed it. So I just had to stick in a 100 kilo ohm, I mean, 100 ohm variable resistor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the ideal resistance and then replace that with a fixed resistor. But you can see here we've got the diodes and the resistors and the zener diodes. I will show a schematic of this in just a little bit. And of course on the back there's even more components. We've got the decoupling capacitors and uh, well I had to put them there because I couldn't put them any anywhere else. So next thing to do is put the gate driver chips in and I'll we'll see if this works. I am sweltering right now because of the relentless sun. Anyway, just before I do that, if I'd have thought about how I'm going to turn the interrupter on and off, and rather than have a switch to connect and disconnect it from the uh, gate driver chips, if I have the switch in its neutral position, so neither contact is connected, this thing will just output steady DC. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another switch here, so I can switch this diode in and out. You might not... Yeah, that diode in the middle there. It's the one that sends the signal to the interrupter. I'll be able to turn it on and off from there. And here we are. It is done. So the next thing to do is test it. Really testing that's going on right now. It's this selfish bastard, whoever it is, making all that noise. Now, I'm not going to be plugging it into any MOSFETs or anything today because I think this video's got too long already. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it through this, um, put it through a couple of tests to make sure that everything's doing what it should do, and then in the next video, this will actually be doing stuff. Okay, well we're all set up now. While well, some inconsiderate prat outside is making a lot of noise, sure it's just, I'm sure it's just for the sake of making noise. Close the window. This room is going to get hotter than hell, but there's not much I can do about that. So I've got the scope set up, and I've got it connected to this little thing that I made. Decided to have it with the circuit side up. That way I can, well, connect the scope much easier. I'm using my old probes because one of them has gone open. Well, one of my good scope probes has gone open, and since these are both the same, it's going to. Enough waffle, let's see if it works. Well, the curse of Corn Dude Clem strikes again. So it seems that I was wrong about something. I tested all the wiring and for once everything is connected where it should be. But I thought, when I have no mains frequency going into the interrupter, it would be giving constant DC output. Well, that doesn't seem to be the case. I'm going to have to go back to my original plan of using a switch between the interrupter and the gate trip. So right now I'm a bit PO'd. And one quick modification later, we now have this switch. The switch, pin 3 on the gate driver chips, if that would help if the camera was actually pointed at it. To switch pin 3 on the gate driver chips between either the output of this, or um, just tie it high. Well, success! We're getting a nice square wave out of the gate drive transformer. I think that's a really good idea putting a variable resistor here because I can tune the performance of the transformer. Right now we're getting a really nice square wave. If I turn the variable resistor a little bit, because it's not so good. Let's turn it the other way. So it's starting to clear up. If I just get the screwdriver in the little hole. Turn it too far the other way and we're getting a little bit of overshoot. So I'll turn that back. And perfect. And here it is everybody. I've got to clear this place up but... Here's the final product. Next time you see this it's going to be in a project box. And driving a few MOSFETs. And well, this video is probably getting too long already so, you know, it's probably like... 
15,000 hours long, so I've got to go and edit that all down. So, I'll see you next time, and until next time, goodbye. Well, I might as well use the remaining sunlight for something. So, show the schematics. So, this is the schematic of the high frequency thing. And this is the schematic of the low frequency thing. So this is the interrupter, or staccato control rather. With my little modification done to it. And of course this is all the high frequency stuff. Just a couple of things I want to go over. This voltage regulator from the staccato controller is also powering the CD4046 chip. There is also another voltage regulator connected to the transformer, which is powering these two gate driver chips here. And, uh, well, there you go. I completely forgot to draw schematics, so that's why I'm putting it in right here. So if you want to ponder over these, you can just pause the video and have a look. So that's the staccato controller. And that's the high frequency gate driver part. And it really is until next time, goodbye now. And look at this. It's actually raining for once. Which is a nice change after all that constant sun, sun, sun we've been getting. This is what I like to see outside. Just don't want to be out in it. Do you know? Somebody out there, because it was sunny, decided they'd have a party. Not having a party now, though. I hope it stays like this forever. This is what I like about night. Everything gets quiet. Including those assholes who are partying. The birds shut up. The assholes shut up. Everything just shuts up and gets quiet. Heavenly. It's the next day, and what do you know? It's sunny again. So you know what that means. Pretty soon I'm gonna have to put up with... <coughs> emanating from all the other houses. Because whenever it's sunny, they always have parties. And this is another reason why I hate sunny days. You can hear that? There's not music. Someone out there doing DIY. And I have to have the window open because it's too hot in here with the window closed. I have to put up with that noise. And you wonder why I hate sunny days? I don't know why I have to live next to such selfish, careless, no good, worthless, lousy, inconsiderate tossers. Yep, this is what sunny days mean to me. This is all they mean to me. Noise! Sunny days are all we get here. The noise never stops. It's always like this. I think I must live in like the noisiest neighborhood in the entire history of mankind. The only noises I want to hear are like the birds chirping and the wind blowing through the trees. A thunderstorm would be nice. Instead, I have to put up with either music or DIY noise. And bang 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 bang. Surprise I haven't been driven insane already. Oh wait, maybe I'm already insane. Certainly getting that way. Don't know where that's coming from anyway. And that's another thing, you don't know where it's coming from. It just never ends round here. You know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna record all the noises and send them a CD of it. So then he can listen to it through headphones without it having to disturb anybody else. Oh son, go down, go down. I want it to be dark again. 
I want it to be as black out there as the inside of my soul. Another reason I hate summer? Look at this. It's just gone nine. It's still light outside. It's still light outside. At fucking 9 p.m. This isn't how it's supposed to be. Evenings are supposed to be dark. Even at night it doesn't get quiet. It's about quarter to ten right now. And somebody, somewhere, is having a party because I can hear the music. Or at least what I assume is supposed to be music. I think it's coming from over there. At least it's not coming from next door. He's gone, so that's one good relief. But yeah. Now they've started being noisy. It's not even a weekend. It's Monday. Why would they be partying on a Monday? It makes no sense. It's only because it was sunny. I keep hearing... Mm. 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 Music. Why don't they play something decent, like the Beatles or something like that? Probably immigrants. If it was a rainy day, they wouldn't be doing this. I have to report this. I've got evidence. You want to know another reason why I hate sunny days? Because it does not coordinate with the stuff I want to watch. Because I want to watch dark and spooky stuff. That's my thing. And a sunny day really spoils the atmosphere for that. This does not coordinate with this. 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 And this does not coordinate with this.